100 pieces of response to the uh, action itself. For example, um, uh, a, a mini version of the mountain was made as a, uh, as a display in the uh, actual Occupy site. But uh, the really interesting thing is not just about this mini uh, line rock. Uh, there was a case also about uh, an old man who carried lights, uh, carefully designed lights, uh, daily to here in order to illuminate a piece of art. Also, so uh, these kind of actions, like uh, how he designed, he, he, he think that the, uh, it is under illuminated at night, the, the mini sculpture. So he designs a specific set of lights and, and he uh, brings it there uh, each day in order to illuminate. So these kind of interactions uh, and the overwhelming attention on aesthetics was what I was focusing on. So uh, since my time is, the time is tight, I, I try to finish it quickly. So I'm just so showing some images quickly. For example, this is a small cigarette sharing station created by created by the occupiers. Uh, and below the, the the photo that is not clear enough is actually a set of rules uh, uh, governing the cigarette sharing station. This is a small origami station teaching people how to. Uh, make an origami yellow umbrella. So um, my my thesis and my analysis was that uh, how are we going to conceptualize this uh, pretty decentralized? Everyone participate directly in the movement, uh, and he only he or she only uh, feels that during the umbrella movement feels that. Uh, a, valid, a valid participation is one about creation. This is actually quite uh, strange. Uh, one of the way uh, I would like to interpret it and uh, through a specific analysis of Hong Kong's political culture is uh, drawing on a very long uh, uh, and political analysis long ago by two political scientists. Uh, the attentive spectators actually is how uh, these two political scientists, Lao and Kwan, uh, understood the moral political participation of the Hong Kong people. Um, in a way, uh, it suggests that Hong Kong people are very uh, far from or unfamiliar with more militant or uh, more uh, contentious, more uh, political uh, encounters or, or political movement. So one of the ways to understand why such a contentious umbrella movement lasts for 79 days and uh, allowed to be sustained and has the mass participation is via the channel of art. So it, this in a way explain why uh, there's a huge and unprecedented mass participation using art as a, a form, as a way to, to feel that you're part of the movement. So this actually is uh, a very different case. We, we, are, we, are, we are very different from uh, the Occupy situation described by Derek Graeber of the Occupy Wall Street, or some of the situation in Turkey, in, Greek, uh, in Greece, or in Spain, where a lot of political de de deliberation was, were going on during the Occupy, and new forms of political communication were developing. While in Hong Kong, strangely, uh, we, uh, during the movement, we weren't able to develop any successful form of political communication, deliberation, discussions, and people are retreating in a way, I uh, use the word retreating to his own in creating something, in making art. So this is a very strange phenomenon. And uh, uh, my way of uh, conceptualizing how uh, uh, eventually a festive condition of mutual inspiration and co collective opposition is, is created. So uh, my conclusion is that if such a strange condition was created specifically because of the political culture in Hong Kong, uh, is that if 
if this if this kind of condition is uh, positive, is there any way we can reproduce that condition uh, through other political culture, or whether it's worthwhile to to explore this question, whether the the uh, the the form of occupy art where where people are uh, almost like having festival on the street and art festival on the street co-creating things whether this is a whether this is a a, a form of um, art creation that we should focus on and um, sorry I'm I'm seriously overrunning right so uh, my conclusion is that however interestingly this kind of festive condition or this kind of intense encounter without political without direct political message but each create his own art project is was envisioned by Mayakovsky after the Russian Revolution as a way to consolidate the result of the Russian Revolution. So when they imagine the highest form of avant-garde art is not about form or about a specific way of display, but it's actually uh, they describe a, a type of festival where people gather without actually directly talking about ideology, but they create their messages autonomous, autonomously, and it's a kind of festive gathering. So uh, quite uncannily or, or quite strangely, I find the, the umbrella movement actually could be one of the most, uh, one of the most concrete historical moments that uh, an ad or realize the vision of some of the most obscure um, uh, art theory written by uh, the Russian uh, Russian uh, cultural theorists right after the Russian Revolution. So, um, um, so I to cut short my presentation. Uh, I just want to let you know that. Um, in a way, the establishing of the Umbrella Movement Visual Archive was uh, an idea to uh, preserve these kind of objects that are rather marginalized. And uh, so I try to, my, my, my theorization of these objects and the mass creation was uh, uh, a process uh, alongside the actual process of collecting these objects or and forming a bottom-up and grassroots institution in order to preserve the objects. So uh, this is our booth during the movement. In uh, So we have meetings and uh, communication with the occupiers to collect objects from the movement. Now um, uh, the archive contains uh, a total of 400 uh, objects and a thousand different types of poster are just donated to the Library of Chinese University of Hong Kong. So in the near future, uh, I'm hoping that uh, researchers can access to the archive very soon. So this is, uh, sorry, I couldn't quite uh, explain everything, but uh, I hope during the discussion session I can explain more. Thank you. Thank you very much for all three engaging presentations. So we have six minutes left. I'll skip my comments. I'm going to collect three questions, comments, and then distribute them to the uh, presenters. So feel free to Raise your hand. Read comments. Yes. Make it short. So, well, I wanted to comment on uh, the first presentation on um, on feminism. Um, and in that case, I thought it was specific online. I had the impression that um, feminism was kind of um, reduced to issues of genderism. I don't know if I'm mistaken here, but uh, I had the impression that uh, maybe discourses on feminism have gone a bit further than that, you know. 
that it's just been evident today that, of course, you have men that are feminists. And to me, one of the most interesting publications on feminism these days uh, came actually from Alexander Wehili, you know, and, and, and a couple of others. So maybe you would, you would like to say something about that, you know, um, to, to, to clarify it. Um, then I, I wanted to, to also to, to ask a question about the, 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 the archive of the, um, the Umbrella Revolution, um, which is, so, did, did you, you found it, so did people, did people give you, bring the objects to you, or did they give you the right, do you have an official, you know, because again, that's the thing about archive making, who, 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 who gives the agenda, <laughs> you know, who creates the framework? Is it something is it personal or, or is there, you know, a movement behind, behind it? And if people contribute, you can see it. Okay, let's move on to the next comment or question. Yes, I have a, <clears throat> I guess I'll also ask Samson to elaborate a little on you know, when the uh, visual archive for the Umbrella Movement started, I think it started as an uh, initiative to document the site. I want to know how, and perhaps you can elaborate on that, how that became into an initiative that collect objects, and what were the pressures that you were undergoing. And another second question perhaps I want to bring out is on race, actually, which is something that in Hong Kong is something that really needs to be discussed, but is very, very difficult. Um, that, you know, even in terms of what you were showing, that article, it's on the Hong Kong Chinese, right? Actually, what it, what's implicated that is there are other people in Hong Kong, but how do we actually find a vocabulary and a language to talk about them? And I, I can share a little anecdote. It's on the protest site, you know, one of those nights. There were, you know, people who were fourth or fifth generation South Asian marching through, and, you know, Cantonese is their first language. And, and then there was this huge uproar of people saying, yes, now we have diversity in the Occupy site. I think that actually reveals a huge problem and a failure almost of the umbrella movement of what is being narrativized and what is being historicized as well. And I wanted to ask your views on that. Any other comments, questions, especially um, um, tenure? I, I think it's 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 too much to deal with at, at the mm -hmm. moment because I think it, it, it's it's so interesting um, to, to learn like more about the, the field. Are gone to okay, <laughs> <laughs> because um, it would actually be good to see the films. You know, I think you know, we're already talking about uh, over lunch, and I, I think one really has to see because there's so many questions that might come up. Okay, well then let's. Before we go on with the uh, uh, commuters' response, I'm going to ask a quick question to Chang so that we have some time to think about. Basically, please use up your mic. Basically, you know, cinema and literature has been genre and institution that flourishes based on imagination, fiction, and mainly future too. Now this. 10 years pushes the envelope of that institutionalization hypothesis. What if is the premise of this film? What if it's not about fantasy, future, and dream, imagination only, but comes with specific questions that they are bothered by, that they are worried about? Hypothesis of what if is the central part of this uh, mythology movie. So I would like you to respond to the, the, the what if as a methodology of that movie can be used as a sort of form of social inquiry that is very penetrating, very powerful. Okay. Now, should we go to a uh, Neo response to the uh, gender diversity? Uh, 그 나는 어 저는 그 I don't want to discuss uh, with the real feminism or uh, the, 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 uh, the tolerance or the discussion, ongoing discussion in South Korea uh, is uh, 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 what stage 
our last page they are located. I don't want uh, I don't want to avoid such a discussion. Just I want to um, uh, uh, so that's why I wanna to emphasize uh, emphasize on the contingency and uh, and the contingent foundation and, and then the effect. A uh, very momentous effect. <coughs> and um, another reason uh, why I would like to uh, uh, I like to place a stress on such a contingency. Um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, what what is not uh, working anymore in the uh, public or popular uh, imagination about the Korean nation building or uh, about the Korean uh, fi uh, uh, future nation imagination or the as one society. So I think uh, the um, uh, I think that the uh, home as a place for production and reproduction uh, is now um, uh, is now. Um, uh, not working as a uh, the the as the the, um, the most basic uh, unit of the Korean uh, the the uh, Korean uh, capital production and the labor production and reproduction. This is the why such a turbulence and this exploded. I think and. The okay, I guess. Basically, that was a hashtag version of feminism, right? It had the uh, performative value of conceptually poaching feminism to demonstrate that they are even eager to quote-unquote consume this notion of feminism in their own way. So it has a more performative value rather than accuracy of the concept as such. Now, I think there is a, the question you're raising is about political economy of hatred. How is it structured and conditioned by changing conditions of society that is premised upon certain type of capitalism, so it's kind of mentality that fostered within them, right? So I think it's, it's a very interesting question you're raising, and you probably have a long distance to go in order to answer your question, and we are all, you know, uh, uh, looking forward to uh, exciting research. read the paper. <laughs> yes. To read the paper yes. when it comes out. All right, now, your turn. Uh, actually, I was to agree that there's, there's actually two completely different paper. One uh, trying to theorize or conceptualize what happened in relation to art and the movement. Actually, there's a whole other presentation about how the archive actually works. So um, it's a long story, but to cut it short, um, we first position ourselves as um, participant of the movement itself. So we, just now the booth we built, actually is one of the camps, one of the, uh, one of the booths, there are uh, over hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of booths uh, in the occupied site, so we are one of them. And while each of the booths is carrying out a specific task, like uh, there is booth distributing blankets and uh, water, food, and uh, uh, safety and uh, there are even booths for students to study uh, their study room so if there's um, a kind of society being created so we imagine us being a parallel uh, archive uh, in the movement so if the archive has all kinds of social services why the museum or the archive couldn't have its representative there so some of the doctors uh, they set up uh, our first aid station there. So we have some volunteers who work their day job in archives, gallery, come and form this uh, booth. So in a way, we start the whole thing as part of the movement. And secondly, um, we actually involve about 250 volunteers. So they are kind of our ambassador explaining the rationale of preserving their objects to everyone. So we gain consent of people who create something by a complicated mechanism. Uh, since we have the proof, so we try to be more high profile. 
So when someone wants to create something on a specific day, they are uh, ultimately they in the later half of the movement, they first came to us and telling us, uh, I'm going to make something. Uh, would you be willing to come and uh, document it, the process for us? And then we start the dialogue. So um, in order to try to gain the consent of the creator of uh, the objects. Uh, so we, the typical question we ask is, uh, in what situation uh, would you allow us to protect this object? Uh, like uh, when the police uh, is, if, if the police is arriving in five minutes and he's going to destroy the object, would you like us to protect it for you? Something, some dialogue going on. But um, this is too ideal. Eventually, we we couldn't quite let uh, control all the volunteers, uh, since uh, a lot of the, them just on the last few days they just grab things without following the protocol and rules. So it became a chaos. Uh, but uh, what is interesting was that what was interesting was that uh, originally it, we expect a very violent eviction. Uh, so we imagine police will arrive on on a, uh, at a, at a certain moment and they clear the, the ground. But uh, eventually, uh, it unfolds quite differently. Uh, the government announced publicly uh, on which day uh, they are going to clear us. So. Uh, on the last few days, uh, things turned around. Uh, people just come, came to us and give us their objects they create and ask us to protect it for them. So um, it was overwhelming. We couldn't take so much. So, uh, so eventually we don't have to send volunteers out to work according to our inventory release, our imaginary inventory release. And people just came directly to us. Um, so this is just part of the story is. Uh, but uh, one thing to conclude is that uh, the development of this understanding uh, and, a, and a satisfactory or, or a, a legitimate framework to work on is drawing on a lot of uh, dialogue. Firstly, we talked to, I, I once talked to people from the M15 archive from Spain and also the Interference Archive in New York and uh, also the Occupy Wall Street Archive. So uh, they gave us some very, actually quite useless guidelines. It's just because uh, the, 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 it's very context sensitive. So uh, actually, uh, I also read a few paper by, mainly by the, uni, uh, by the Museum of London. Uh, their staff, uh, some of the very uh, early uh, uh, art practitioner developing formal institutional uh, reflection on how to preserve protest art uh, in a very uh, dynamic situation. So Museum of London has actually developed a very mature protocol uh, we try to draw on, but they are part of the institution. We are trying to develop something that we call uh, the bottom-up archive. And, and actually, I forget the whole point about raising the issue of whether there's a, a, a whether we can establish a mechanism for Asian social movement to form dialogues about these kind of things, because when things uh, erupt, uh, we don't have, we, we actually, it, it, it was very difficult to draw on similar experiences. And uh, sorry, I, I'm making the answer very long. Uh, for Michelle's question, uh, I think uh, there were already a lot of comment suggesting that the umbrella movement is quite reactionary because uh, um, even in the way people make art in order to uh, celebrate themselves and the movement and to keep the movement in a very utopian and uh, out of uh, kind of uh, detached from the political dynamic in order to have a kind of utopian communities. So uh, some of the People are actually suggesting the movement is very exclusionary. The part of, uh, I, I work in most is uh, at Moti, which is uh, where the government headquarters was, uh, there is. And uh, uh, <laughs> so um, <laughs> it is mainly the sites where more uh, middle class uh, population joining the movement. 
So I actually the archive spend uh, 70 or 80 percent of its time in these sites rather than in the more violence and uh, uh, more uh, yeah more dynamic sites in Hong Kong, which is another <coughs> occupied zone uh, where more grassroots and uh, and more actually more uh, con uh, more contentious, more fights with the police and so on. So, uh, but it also reflects uh, in, in, in that situation much less uh, art is produced or much less objects are produced. Um, so, um, I don't know, I, I don't know whether I have already. Do you deal with issues of, um, you know, again, coming back to fiction and bias? You know, because again, of course, we can make private archives, but a public archive then becomes something very sensitive. How, how does one make an archive of something one was part of, in which you know it, there is a lot of room to fictionalize it? So I'm just asking. I mean, I'm thinking loud. You know, again, because so what about ten years from now? Let's go back to the film. So somebody comes to that archive, you know, because you are part of it, you're part of the movement, you know. So there's a possibility of, of, of course, of some side bias, of pushing it in the direction, of creating a narrative that you want to be read in 10 years. So it, the possibility of non-objectivity, I, I, I don't know. How does that play a role in some of your discussions? I mean, we're talking about that. Think of the same thing. Okay. Well, I guess the objectivity wasn't part of the uh, priority in many ways. Okay. Rather, the reverse is the case. The archiving process is part of the movement uh, rather than being detached. Right? Okay. I think that was the point. I think there is there is something. I'd like to point out quickly two things. The characterization of occupy art has to be separated from characterization of Hong Kong student activism, right? There are other uh, occasions of Occupy protest. Not all of them share the similar kind of characteristics that you delineate. For example, the withdrawn nature, more immersive nature, more creative nature, lack of political discourse. Well, somewhere else we can find that. So let's not equate the Occupy art with the Hong Kong student movement that took place two years ago for a certain period of time. I think that's something to think about. The second thing is I think the language of protest has been a time-honored subject matter in theater studies, rhetorical studies, performance studies, sociologies. Now when you make distinction between, say, protest language, language of protest, with Occupy Art, the centrality goes to duration issue, the space issue and time issue at the same time. I would like to hear more about the concrete characteristics emerging from this question of time and space intersecting. And that's where uh, the separation can be made possible. Meantime, give this to Chung. Yes, uh, thank you for, thank you for your comment and question, something like that. Uh, I'd like to make my answer very short. <laughs> actually, I, I haven't, actually, I have never thought about this film for a long time. So just I, I just have watched this film just uh, two, two months ago, and then I forgot, I forgot totally. And then I suddenly think about, I just consider this conference uh, maybe needs to be discussed uh, about the, this kind of thing. So, and then I, uh, last week I watched again. I watched again, and then I only found uh, what Hong Kong people want now, or what, or uh, what Hong Kong people is worrying about. So, you know, it's, it's, film is film, and uh, reality is a reality. But you know. Uh, I think this this film is kind of a, a, a collective creation. Actually, the the, the umbrella movement affects the five directors of these films, the filmmakers. So, uh, this this.
this relationship between film and reality or the history of uh, that I mentioned at the last time, uh, at the last part, the, the midnight after. So they, they, it was very, it is very complicated thing. But uh, so I ju I'm just starting, you know, to think about these these complex, yeah, complex of the movement. Place to start that inquiry is whose, whose fiction is this? Whose hypothesis is this? Is this younger generation? Is it college student, artist, or generation? Hong Kong is not one in there, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess I can combine the two questions uh, uh, relate, uh, because I realize I haven't answered one of Michelle's questions uh, about how we were eventually collecting objects instead of. Uh, working on documentation. So the formation of the archive was firstly under the pressure or the public pleasure of someone has to do this job to document what is so overwhelmingly unfolding and happening. So at that time we were we all have a sense this is something strange and um, a very intense intense moment. So uh, at first when we formed the team we decided that uh, photo documentations and comprehensive interviews will be enough. But then um, a lot of people working in the institutions actually come to us, like uh, people working in museums or people working in libraries, they said they, they couldn't do anything at the moment. So they were wondering whether we can take up the duty temporarily in order to store the objects. So under that kind of pressure, it, 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 it was actually an accident that we developed the whole thing into an initiative in collecting the objects. And then actually, to answer the second question, um, uh, by understanding ourselves as some people who are working on self-archiving, like uh, archiving our own uh, political passion and our own political movement, I, uh, quickly we realized the problem of bias and the problem of uh, conflict interpretation. So uh, soon after the movement ended and uh, when we, were, we have all the objects on our hand, we, one of the conclusions we have quickly is that we have to, uh, we have to be the people that refrain from uh, interpreting the objects or talking about the objects. So uh, we decided that our own role is only to create uh, an archive that is as open as possible for multiple interpretations to to exist. So uh, quickly we give up all the ideas about using the objects or, or publishing books about the object and so on. So we only work on creating an archive that is as open as possible. But uh, this project is still on the way um, after we donated the objects. So uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I sense the validity of that question uh, wholeheartedly because uh, I, I was in many meetings that end up with, with we, we have fights on how our role should be. Uh, since we are, uh, there were a lot of talk about how we can make use of the objects in order to uh, continue the movement and so on. So, um, and then we have lots of conflict. So eventually we think that the only option is to only be a guardian of those objects. So I don't know, this is, this is what happened. And then on that other question, uh, I was frustrated at the moment when, when a very senior uh, social scientist in Hong Kong responded to my presentation and suggested that the mere fact that uh, a lot of Occupy art were created is just reflecting how Afrin Hong Kong is. People have the money, so they can have the, have the resources at, the, at their disposal in creating things. So um, I'm very happy that you raised the question about time and space, because I think uh, I think the case of Hong Kong actually proves the discussions about Occupy to the extreme because uh, we were not occupying squares or 
or some of the legal leg, uh, places for legal assembly. And we have a colonial law governing uh, public assembly. Uh, so the whole Occupy was actually unlawful and uh, it's a civil disobedience on highways and some of the main traffic roads in Hong Kong. So that is rather unique. So my interpretation is that the more difficult it is for the people to defend this occupied situation across time, the more inventive its strategy has to be. So that's how the occupied art condition was pushed to the extreme. So we see a similar thing in Taiwan because in order to defend a legislative uh, council, so they were occupying the legislative hall, they have to devise a lot of uh, aesthetic strategy to respond to that. And also about the duration of uh, 79 days in Taiwan is also similar uh, duration. So, uh, yeah, so I was just wondering uh, how arts, art history, art theory can respond to the uh, theory uh, in, 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 uh, in the study on Occupy because a lot of social scientists are trying to say that Occupy is something new, it's something uh, 21st century. Uh, so, but also a lot of uh, sociologi sociologists quickly respond there's nothing new, it's just a kind of public assembly. So I was just trying to join the side of those who try to provide a language to understand Occupy. And I think that needs also a language uh, integrate to it to understand Occupy art as a specific form of space-time, um, as you said, a space-time encountering. So um, I think it's not very satisfactory, perhaps my analysis, but uh, I, I guess it's the beginning. This year, uh, we also published a book called Strike Up by uh, yes, McKee, also, uh, I guess, in one of the very first book, and also uh, WJT Mitchell uh, uh, is one of the very few visual, uh, visual studies scholar working on trying to understand the specificity of Occupy Art. Right, well, thank you very much. Um, I guess we need to hold judgment on the social protest and movement, um, neither downplaying their implication nor lionizing. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a question worth asking ourselves. Um, why is archiving always associated with the issues of objectivity, bias, when actually art is comfortably dancing with the questions of subjectivity, creativity, and all. So was it that you were doing artistic archiving or archivist arts? That's just something to think about. I think it's appropriate to let this uh, discussion concluded by one of our uh, organizers. So if you have uh, major remarks to Mike, uh, make. Well, it's been very enlightening two days. So the first thing I have to thank all the speakers and everybody to have come so far to the uh, conference. Thank you. Perhaps the only comment I want to make is to follow up on the, on the last comments. Um, perhaps uh, uh, with all these discussions about um, a public movement, we should go back to art and ask ourselves the one's very specific nature of the art site. Because if it is a real, truly art site, it is by itself, the physical site is somehow, um, even clandestinely, illegal. Because the whole purpose of having an art site is to, is to occupy a space that will transcend the law or at least ride on, step, step on the border of legality. And precisely because of this, the whole historical background of Western art and its relation to, say, spiritual sites. Spiritual sites are sites which tries to transcend, which in fact claims to transcend secular law anyway. And today, it is art site which has actually provided that, that ground. And um, I agree also with that very insightful observation that uh, the, pop, uh, the political demands of the, uh, of the activists, especially student demands, were actually in right in the beginning, but they all faded out. And it, uh, when it, as the Occupy movement evolved, nobody was very sure what 
demands were being made. In fact, there were no demands being made as, as time went on. So, um, we, I think to talk about this purportedly political movement in Hong Kong uh, in this situation is um, uh, truly appropriate because we are actually giving a proper context for something rather nebulous. And uh, so this is an observation. Uh, it doesn't really uh, uh, respond to any of the early discussions. But thank you all very much. And hope you will continue this speaking. Sure. All right, well, let's congratulate our, ourselves. Thank you. Yes, we're moving to yes. the screen. So, somebody make an announcement about the place we're going, how we go. So it's, uh, we walk together, it is only five, ten minutes walk from here to Asia Cultural Center. We reserved our, the library um, auditorium, which is a very <laughs> spectacular auditorium for screening films. So we will watch the films created by um, um, Song Yong. Uh, uh, individually, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Curated, yeah, the panel, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we go? We walk there. Can all together. All together walk. I'm glad we're seeing screens. Yeah. Is it uh, what we saw also? Yeah. Some? Yeah. No. Uh, actually, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why I can't read the program. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the same. Oh, it's the whole thing. Oh, oh. Maybe it's only it's small bits. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. Yeah. Oh. It's the same. So, there is something to think about also. You can